Hey, Dustin Tibbetts here, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth Managers. How you doing today? Well, look, uh, today we're going to give you four specific ways that you or things you need to really keep in mind uh, when taking money out of your IRA to buy a home. Uh, now, a lot of financial advisors, you know, you got to have a lot of money to work with them, and they would help you through that process. And um, sadly, most of you aren't quite there yet, right? If you don't have millions of dollars, you can't work with the big financial advisors. Well, we're trying to change that here at Jazz Wealth. It doesn't matter how much you have. If you're just getting started or you're currently retired and trying to manage that life, uh, we'll work with you. We'll help you through the process. And one of the things that we occasionally have to help customers with is when they want to buy a home. They go, Dustin, uh, I want to buy this house. And uh, I hear that I could take money out of my IRA or my Roth IRA without paying a penalty. Now, before we even get started, you can't afford, avoid the tax, right? So if you have a traditional IRA and you start taking money out of it qualified to go buy this house, um, you know, the tax you still owe, right? It's income. You didn't pay tax on it. The IRS is still going to want you to pay. If it's in a Roth IRA, you could take out your contributions, but if you take out any growth, maybe we can help you avoid the penalty. But of course, if you might have to pay the tax, right? It's only fair. You're not going to get away with that, right? <laughs> All right, so let's get started here. Um, look, the goal is we're under the age of 59 and a half. These are the assumptions I'm using today. We want to take out the $10,000. That's the max you can take out, by the way, uh, to go buy a, a house, build a house, rebuild a house, whatever it may be. So here's four things I want you to keep in mind. Number one, um, you got to be a first time home buyer. Not really, <laughs> right? So first time home buyer, um, this be your first home, maybe it's that you've ever bought before. Um, it could be a second home. Maybe you bought a house a long time ago, sold it, went and rented somewhere, moved to a new town, your job got you all set up, and now you go, hey, I want to buy a house in this neighborhood. A first time home buyer is either someone who has never owned a home before, or it has been two years since they've owned a house. Now specifically, we don't want to break any rules here, so let's get even deeper. Two years from the time that you last owned the prior house to the date that you signed the contract. Oops, right? The date that you signed the contract, not the day that you close on the house. It's the day that you signed saying, I will buy this house. We will close in 30 to 60 days, whatever it may be. Um, that's what you're focused on. If you're buying the house, if you're building a brand new house and you go, well, look, I rented for a few years. Yeah, I used to own a house, but now I want to build a house. It's two years from the time that you start construction, right? Not the date that you take ownership of the house, two years from the day that you start construction, okay? Little tiny rule there. A lot of people get tripped up on that. Now you know, right? Uh, number two, um, you could take out the $10,000 from your IRA or Roth IRA, whatever it may be, uh, to buy a first home or maybe not if it's been more than two years. Um, but if you're married, you and your spouse can do the same $10,000. Theoretically, you could take out $20,000 uh, to buy your first home, right? Because each person counts individual. The I in uh, IRA stands for individual. So the rules are with the individual. If you happen to be married, you and your wife are individuals. You both can take out the $10,000 uh, if you like. All right, number three, you gotta use the money for qualified uh, acquisition costs is, I believe, is the word that the IRS uses. Qualified acquisition costs, and you got to do it within 120 days, that $10,000 that you take out. If you don't do it within 120 days, deal falls through, you change your mind, whatever, you can put the money back. It's not a big deal. Uh, but you got to use it for qualified acquisition costs. What is qualified acquisition costs? Well, I actually looked it up on the IRS website just to see if they listed out anything. They list a few things, but basically they, their actual words are any usual or reasonable settlement, financing, or other closing costs. So leave it to the IRS to give you a little bit of a gray area, though they do get specific on the page. Just know you can't take the money out. Say you're going to buy a house. Uh, the deal falls through and you go, ah, we'll start a business instead. Don't do that. The IRS is going to find out. Now, if you're under the age of 59 and a half, you want to take the $10,000 out, you're a first time home buyer, you're married, let's say it's the 20,000, whatever you want to do. You, number four is you can actually do this for yourself. You could do it for your spouse, right? Let's say, uh, you know, you, you, you guys together are buying a house. Uh, maybe one of you is buying the house. I don't know. I'm not going to get into your family life there, but you could do this for either you, 
you and your spouse. You could do this for your children, right? You could do it for your spouse's children, right? Let's say it's from a previous marriage. It's not technically your child. You could take the money out and buy them their first time uh, home, uh, first home or build their first home, rebuild their first home, whatever it may be. You could do it for your grandchildren. And I'm not going to write all this out. Let's just come on. This is supposed to be a short video. You could do it for your spouse's grandchildren. You could do it for your parents or your spouse's parents, right? So it applies down the whole mix of things. Now, you can't go do this for like, you know, my favorite aunt, you know, I'm going to buy her a house. I'm going to give her some money. You know, my buddy down the street, I'm going to buy him a new house. No, of course not. It's got to be you, your spouse, or your kids, grandchildren, or parents, or your spouse's uh, kids, grandchildren, or parents as well. Okay? So, number one, there's the tip of the day. Uh, first time home buyer is not technically an actual first time home buyer. It's been two years from the time that you um, owned a house to the time you put a contract on a new house you're going to buy, or the day you start construction. If it's a new house, you can do it. You and your spouse can do the $10,000, so a total of $20,000 got to use it for the house, right? Reasonable expenses for buying the house, right? So that's that part. And you can also do it for all the people that we listed there below. Well, I hope this helps you in some way. I hope it helps you avoid a penalty, right? Be specific. The IRS will be specific. So make sure you are. If you go, wow, I never knew that before. My financial advisor didn't tell me that. Maybe you'll consider working with us here at Jazz. We not only help you with your investments, we manage our own investments here. So we don't buy mutual funds that cost you money. All the performance is right on the website. And we also teach. We're big fans of teaching. If you like what you see here, we carry that over privately for our customers. I hope you'll check us out. If you don't need our services, maybe you'll hit the subscribe button because that helps us out a lot as well. That's all I have for you today. Stay tuned later, five o'clock today, we're gonna do the closing beat. That's our stock market update show. We just go over what happened in the markets for the day. Maybe you find that your investments wiggled around a little bit today and you wanna know what's going on. Come back to this channel at five o'clock. We do a live show every single market day. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll talk to you soon. Why should you choose JazzWealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours. <laughs>